there are a lot of companies who are like, hey, I'm going to help you get money from these companies. Meaning instead of you just going to that company, you're going to go to another company who's going to go and do it for you and take a fee. You see what I'm saying? What's the difference between a 360 deal and a regular contract deal with a record label? So today, anyway, music and record label deals are still 360 deals. So the way the 360 deal used to be is that the record labels would collect from everything from your music career. It wasn't just distribution of the music, right? So they go, it's a 360, so I'm going to collect from your tour. I'm going to collect from your merchandising. I'm going to collect from your, you know, acting and your books and all this stuff, right? And so at some point, I don't know if they meant to, if they're trying to be sneaky, but this is what happened. Instead of calling it 360, now they're just like, hey, here's your record label agreement or your recording agreement. And then like sandwiched on page 20, they go, hey, you know, the ancillary revenue that we're gonna take from your from your earnings is like this percentage. So the point just being, it's literally the same thing. They just now don't call it a 360 right. deal, but they still do it. Like that's, that's industry standard still today. And why it's so in unbelievably crucial if you're getting any kind of contract that you take it to an entertainment attorney to look at it to look at the language how it's switching up on you they're current with earn, you know industry changes and industry standard and how it develops and we'll make sure that you know exactly what you are getting into can you name all the things that i have to join register in the u.s to get all of my royalties as an independent artist domestically and internationally get your pens get your notepads i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it on you so as far as how to get how to get all of your monies, okay? If you wanna make sure you're collecting all your royalties because there are a number of them. If you guys remember, a song is comprised of the composition, right? Your chords, your melodies, your words, and then the final recorded version is the master. So there's two sides of any song and you get to collect royalties on both sides, right? And so if you don't know about certain platforms that you need to be registered on, you might miss it. So here's your list. This is excluding your music distributor because you upload music to a music distributor, music distributor sends your music to music platforms. Those platforms earn royalties, send it back to the distributor, distributor pays you. Okay, so that's, that's, that's basically normal function of music distribution. Where else you need to make sure that you are registered, and I'll be sure to include, this is primarily for US-based artists and musicians and uh, producers. You want to make sure, first and foremost, be registered on a PRO, Performance Rights Organization. In the United States, we have BMI, ASCAP, CSAC. Choose one. All right? Choose one. Go register. It'll be great. And what that does is it collects your performance royalties related to the composition. So remember I said you have the song itself before it's been recorded. You just wrote it. It's beautiful on the piano and you're singing it. You're loving it. Composition. You get paid publishing for the composition side. And you get that money through, let's say, BMI. I've been with BMI for a long time. I have nothing but nice things to say about it as of now. <laughs> um, so in any case, make sure you're just, you know, with a PRO. And then besides the PRO, uh, sound exchange, right? So sound exchange is where you collect your non-interactive streaming revenue on the recorded side. So this is for stuff like, you know, Sirius XM, Pandora, and it's different monies altogether. So you do need to have your stuff registered on each of these platforms that I'm walking you through. Okay. And the great thing that I love about sound exchange is that it collects the money, whether you have your stuff registered yet or not. So for a lot of people, they might not have accounts with sound exchange just yet. And so they'll go set one up. They'll give all the information to sound exchange. And then sound exchange is like, Oh, you're the owner of this song, this song, this song, this song. We've collected all these monies for you. And then they, they give you a check. And that actually happened to me uh, and for me. <laughs> I had a few years of back royalties. And so they're like, hey, we have like $700 for you. I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so you have the PROs, United States, and I'll talk about international in a sec, sound exchange. And then also in the United States, you have the Mechanical Licensing Collective, which is how you get mechanical royalties for people covering your song, for example. Basically, the way it works is that if someone covers your song, the digital service providers like Spotify, like Apple Music, they have a mechanical license so to allow the cover song and they pay the publishers they pay the songwriters and the under the copyright act basically they put this you know collective this mechanical licensing collective into place to then pay you 
Okay, so so the short of it is make sure you just have your stuff also registered on the MLC. All right, and then here's my pro tip. All right, so if you did nothing else, those three platforms would be great. But I also have my stuff personally registered on Song Trust, and it's because I'm lazy. <laughs> Song Trust is the only organization that I'm aware of, and the only company that I'm aware of that collects internationally for the PROs. Because remember, I was like, BMI, ASCAP for the US, yay. Well, there's a PRO in every country. And um, I think it's PRS in the UK, SOCAN, I believe that's in Canada. But anyway, Song Trust goes and they have relationships and contracts with all, all these other countries. And so you register on Song Trust, they collect your foreign performance royalties and they pay you. So for me, I was like, okay, that makes sense. But in the lazy part, they also register your stuff and collect your stuff on Mechanical Licensing Collective. <laughs> so really, you know, and, and the short of it, if that's helpful, the short of it is music distributor, BMI or ASCAP, if you're in the United States, Song Trust, and then if you don't use Song Trust, Mechanical Licensing Collective, and Sound Exchange. I know that's a lot. <laughs> you asked for the list, so you got it. Ever dream of getting your music into TV, film, and games? Well, it's easier than you think. And here's what I've put together for you. A music library database of 90 plus music libraries, email templates, and a license agreement all so it's done for you. Go to topmusicattorney.com for sync licensing made easy. Question, um, does Song Trust do publishing in men and royalties collection for previously released music or we gotta register new songs with them? Yeah, so for, for collection, of your royalties my experience is that once they once the music registered which ps took almost a year and apparently they tell you this when you're signing up i don't know it took so unbelievably long and from the time my music actually was finally like registered and and all the things and collecting um it was only then forward so as of today which is all i'm speaking about as of today the company that i'm aware of that collects back royalties is um sound exchange but specifically for song trust, that was not my experience, no. And it, it would make sense, right? Because, because they are going and actively collecting on your behalf and they have to actually go and take a step to register. So on BMI, same thing. Typically you don't get paid back earnings. You guys drop comments on our content throughout the week and then I go through and I will grab some of your questions from that to, to bring to the show. So this was from one of the cover song videos. What does a band do that already uploaded cover songs? Run! <laughs> if you've already uploaded cover songs, I'm assuming you're talking to, you know, if you're talking about YouTube, yeah. if it's, so what, we, what we've discussed and watch the full length video that I've done on how to legally do cover songs, but you have no obligation typically for the cover song in its audio version. So if you've uploaded it to the distributor and all you do is stream, you're not selling physical products, you're not selling it on downloadable platforms, then you're okay under US copyright law, the mechanical license is supposed to be re acquired by the DSP, okay? So that's the audio. So sometimes the issue then becomes, cause you're like, oh, I wanna do a music video for my song. Sure. And so if you put that song on a video platform like YouTube, you have to get a sync license, a synchronization license. And so what we, <clears throat> what we talk about is that, you know, if you've already uploaded it and nothing bad happens, good. <laughs> you know, but a lot of these labels, they do deals with YouTube so that they collect your monetization, your ad monetization. They're like, I know it's a cover. You are supposed to get a sync license, but like me putting a strike on your video doesn't help me. And you know, between you and me, you're marketing the original song. So it's right. actually advantageous for the label. But anyway, so I think setting that aside. So what they do is, is they're like, we're going to be okay. We're not going to do strikes, but we're going to collect the ad revenue. So if you already did the thing and nothing bad happens, good. And it's probably because those songs were otherwise cleared. Question is, what about Harry Fox Agency and Music Reports? Do I also need to register with them? So Harry Fox Agency, the primary use that I've used for it, and not even so much anymore, is to get a mechanical license. And so if you need to get a mechanical license in certain situations, such as you are doing cover songs, you would go through a Harry Fox Agency or an easy song licensing, but specifically to the question, which was for purposes of collecting your royalties, what I listed out is what you is what you want to register with on the music reports. So I've heard about this. I personally have not registered with them, but I do remember someone talking about it's another way to help with the collection of your royalties. Now, here's the thing. Of those companies that I walked you through, 
there are a lot of companies who are like, hey, I'm going to help you get money from these companies. Meaning instead of you just going to that company, you're going to go to another company who's going to go and do it for you and take a fee. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if music reports is that I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm making a note right now so I can look into that. And if, if anyone in the chat, this is an opportunity to educate me. If you've, if you've done anything on music reports, let me know.